G'day fellow fishers. It's great to be back. 2021, the year of more fishing. Welcome to my next video in my series on beach fishing core learning. This is video number two, and it's about sinkers. When it comes to sinkers, it's all about getting your bait in the fish zone and using the right sinker, the right shape to achieve that result. When it comes to choosing sinkers for beach fishing, there's actually a lot more information than you would realise. And in today's video, I'm going to cover five key points which influence your sinker selection. The first key point is shape. What shape sinker is best? Then we've got to look at the weight of the sinker, how heavy? What weight should I be using? Then also, there's matching your sinker to the type of bait that you're using. Then you've got to think about the breaking strain of your line and what weight sinker is appropriate for that. And then of course, there's weather conditions and the different ocean conditions you find on the beach and how those weather conditions impact your choice of sinker. So let's get into it. I'm camping out here in the Aussie bush. I'm just gonna run through a few different types of sinkers. And the first key point is sinker shape. How does the shape of a sinker influence your choice when you're beach fishing? There are many different shapes of sinkers. Here I have a few varieties that could be used off the beach. The first one is the star sinker, which looks a little bit more like a pyramid when you look at it that way. But when you look at it this way, obviously you can see it looks a bit like a star. These sinkers are very good and they are my go-to sinker that I currently use off the beach. This one is called a barrel sinker. You can see it's a long barrel shape and it's a running sinker because the line goes through the middle of the sinker. These next two here are bomb sinkers. They look a little bit like a bomb and they have the swivel molded into the top of the sinker and they are a fixed sinker or they can be used as a running sinker. The next one is a bean sinker. Looks a bit like a bean. It's a running sinker and has a hole running through the center. This one here is called a grapnel sinker and it has these wire legs which come out of it and these are used for strong currents when you really need to be able to hold the bottom in a strong current and they're very good. Then last of all we have ball sinkers which are your classic ball sinker which has the hole in the middle your line goes through this so this is mainly used as a running sinker or it is a running sinker and comes in a variety of sizes. When I go fishing off the beach, I mainly use star sinkers and ball sinkers. When I say a running sinker, this is what I mean. The line goes through the center of the sinker and the sinker basically runs along the line. And the main advantage of that is that if a fish picks up your bait, just pretending a fish is getting it, and it pulls the line, it just goes through the sinker and the sinker stays still and the fish can't feel the weight of the sinker. This is an example of a fixed sinker. You can see that the sinker is attached using a snap swivel in this case and it's just fixed, it doesn't move anywhere. Usually with fixed sinkers, they're used in a rig which is like a, what's called a paternoster style rig where you have a fixed sinker on the bottom, a three-way swivel, and then a leader with a hook on it. Here's how you rig a star sinker as a running sinker. You simply create a small leader with a snap swivel, attach it to your star sinker with another swivel at the top. I'm now going to put my line through there. There you have it. If you'd like all the details on this rig, check out my beach fishing rigs video. In my opinion, there are two main things that influence your choice of sinker shape off the beach. And the first one is, can you hold position in a strong current or wind? And do you need to be able to hold your position? And I know from experience fishing off the beach, probably 70% of the time, you have to contend with current, which is either produced by waves breaking in and just water movement, or you've got a strong wind 
which creates a bow in your line and can push your line along. You can see how this ball sinker just rolls so easily along the sand. Imagine what happens when it's out in the surf and you've got current and wind. So you can see how easily that would lose its position. Look at the contrast with this star sinker. You can easily see how this shape will hold the bottom much better than a ball sinker. I don't really like to have to walk down the beach and follow my sinker as it gets washed down the beach. I would much rather hold position. Um, it's just much more enjoyable. And I haven't found that that impacts your ability to catch fish. Because I know one school of thought is, is that if you've got a rolling sinker or a moving sinker, that you're covering more ground and therefore you've got more chance to catch fish. But I don't think that's, that's really that important. So for me, holding position, I would much rather do that. The second thing that influences your sinker shape choice is actually the aerodynamics of the sinker because the shape of the sinker actually impacts your ability to cast. And if you have a sinker that is more of an aerodynamic shape, if you need to cast distance, then you're going to be able to cast much easier. You're actually going to get a bit further. And really, sometimes an extra five or 10 meters in distance can make all the difference between catching fish or not catching fish. Key point number two in sinker selection is weight. How heavy should your sinker be? I think that there are two main things also with regards to weight because weight really pertains to being able to achieve distance. And it also does have to do with holding position as well because too light a sinker can be moved by the current or pushed by the wind. Now, when it comes to sinker weight, sinker weight plus power and technique equals distance. And there are actually many instances on the beach where a long cast is helpful. Also, with sinker weight, you can't use a heavy sinker or bait with a lightweight beach rod. If you've only got a light rod, it just can't cope so generally when you're using larger baits or heavy sinkers, you need a bigger rod, a heavier rod, to be able to handle that heavy weight. If you're fishing for smaller fish like brim and whiting, very often you don't need to cast very far and you don't need a heavy weight. But then again, if you've got strong currents, you've probably got to change it up to a slightly heavier setup with a heavier sinker. So weight really has to do with casting ability and being able to hold position as well. Specifically uh, with weights for sinkers, I would regard a light sinker to be in the 30 to 50 gram range, and a heavier sinker I would regard to be in the 100 to 120 gram range. So I'm, if I'm fishing for Mulloway with a big bait, I'll use a 120 gram sinker, 110 gram sinker. But for whiting and brim, if there's not much current, I'll probably only use maybe 30 to 50 grams of weight. Key point number three in sinker selection is matching your sinker to the bait that you're using. Small streamlined baits require less weight of sinker because they fly through the air much more easily. So generally if you've got a like a bait like a beach worm or a prawn or pippy or half a pilchard you don't need as much lead to get distance but once again you've got to weigh it up with current etc. If you are using a larger bait, um, if you're fishing for Mulloway, generally you need a larger sinker to try and propel that larger bait out. You've got to use heavier line, a larger sinker, and also if you want to hold that bait in position, you need a larger sinker to do that. Key point number four is matching your sinker weight to the breaking strain of line that you're using. If you're using a light beach outfit where you're maybe using say six kilo line on a light rod fishing for brim and whiting, it just can't cope with a heavy weight. It's just way too heavy. It's way out of balance. When you put the effort, effort into cast that, you know, you could break your line. It's just, it doesn't work. So if you're only using light line in the say six or say five to seven kilo range, you really should be using sinkers that are once again in the say 30 to 50 gram range if you're fishing with a light rod. If you're fishing for larger fish and using say 15 kilo line, 
Um, certainly with 15 kilo line, you can put on a large, say 120 gram sinker, and you can lay into it with as big a cast as you want to, and you're not gonna have any problems. But also, also obviously with that, you need to have a heavier rod that can cope with the weight. So light sinkers with light line, heavy sinkers with heavier line. Key point number five in sinker selection is the prevailing weather conditions. If you've got a beautiful calm night with no wind and it's relatively small surf and you throw your line out and you find that it just holds position, it doesn't move to the left or the right, then it really doesn't matter so much what shape sinker that you use because you know it's calm and there's no, no hassles with the weather. But as soon as you add waves or strong wind or even a strong tidal flow where you've got current, then those weather conditions mean that you need to use a heavier sinker or also a sinker that is a shape that is more suited to holding the bottom like a star sinker or a grapnel sinker. As I mentioned earlier, I think that it's probably only 30% of the time that you actually have calm conditions. That's the case on the east coast of New South Wales where I fish anyway. Um, usually you have wind, Mo most often you have swell of a certain size. So I tend to use sinkers that will hold the bottom better. So there you have it, that's my thoughts on sinkers. I finally signed up to Patreon and I'd really like to be able to produce more content. But as you know, it takes time. So if you'd like to shout me a coffee or three a month, just check out uh, in the description below, it's got links to Patreon and some other platforms. If this video has been helpful, make sure you give it the thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any questions or if you've got your own experience with sinkers, please put it in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.